Alright, hello everybody and today we're going to be deriving the formula for the surface area of a sphere using integration. So it's actually not too bad, uh, it just requires some work to set up, but uh, other than that let's just get straight into it. So the idea to find the surface area of a sphere is to consider very small strips that run around the sphere like so. And we're going to use integration to add all these strips from the bottom of the cylinder up to the top. Uh, to get the total surface area. So to find the area of each of these little slithers here you need to find the circumference and this little width here. So the circumference is going to be quite straightforward after we do this step but the more important thing is how we can represent this little width here. So we're going to be using the unit circle for this. So if we want to find this little width here, this is what it looks like on the unit circle. It just looks like that. So, notice that this is kind of going around the circles and this is like an arc length here. So, maybe we can use uh, radians to express this little width here. Because if this is a unit circle, if we have some angle in radians, then this arc length here is the same thing. That's how radians are defined. So if we want to consider a small step um, around the circle, this is kind of like saying d theta for a change in theta. So this is useful because this actually um, applies for every single point on the circle. Even, even if you're all the way at the top here, d theta will also represent this little width here. So this is really good because um, if we use angles, it kind of goes all the way around the circle. But uh, notice that this is only for the unit circle, but we want to generalize this for any sphere of any radius r. So if I draw up another circle here, let's just give the radius of this circle r, then that means that the, the unit circle is getting scaled up by r because it's kind of like saying r times 1. So, therefore, this angle here, this arc length here is no longer theta, it's actually r times theta, because everything is getting scaled up by r. So, this little change in theta here, this little length here, this is actually becomes r d theta, for the same reason as before, because everything is getting scaled up by r. So... Now this is this is good because we actually we can use theta as our variable of integration and we also found out this little width here and how to express that. So let's go back to our original picture here. Let me rub out this. This here becomes R D theta. And if we draw a line from the origin um, up to the, that point here, the angle it makes here, that's theta. So now if we use theta as our variable of integration, we actually can go from negative pi on 2 all the way to pi on 2. So kind of considering every single little r d theta from here and we're going all the way up to the top here. So that's the idea. So we've found this little width here, but now I need to find this circumference here. So let's see, let's redraw this um, a bit. So this was theta. We know the radius of this sphere is r, and um, to find this circumference here, we actually need to find this length here along the x-axis. So, if this is theta, let's just call this, I don't know, x. So, this is really easy to find x in terms of r. We know that cosine of this the of theta will be equal to x on r, so x is r cosine theta. Alright, so r cosine theta is this um, the radius of each of these little slithers here but we want to find the circumference so we can just simply multiply that by 2 pi so now you have um, the area of slither that's just 2 pi and then that x here that's r cosine theta so this part is the circumference of each of these little slithers here and we need to multiply that by r d theta and this part here is the width of each of these slithers so this equals to 
2 pi r squared, because of these two r's here, cosine theta d theta. Okay, and this is good because we actually have an expression for each of these uh, slithers here. And remember, when we integrate some function, if we have, I don't know, an expression for, say, this little rectangle here, say this is the x and this is f of x here, then this little width here, that's x, and we have the height, that's the function part. Uh, this is should be dx, sorry. So if we want to integrate this from, say, 0 to whatever this point is, a, that's just the integral from 0 to a, so we have the lower and upper bound, and so we just plug in our function times dx, and that will give us the area of this whole thing here. So this is similar to what we're doing with the sphere here. Um, we have this part here. Remember, this is kind of like the function part, and this is the variable of integration. So now you can rewrite this as an integral. So we have the integral of 2 pi r squared cosine theta and d theta. And we need to find out what our lower and upper bounds are. Um, as I said before, uh, we're kind of sweeping theta from negative pi on 2 all the way up to pi on 2. So our bounds will be negative pi on 2 and pi on 2. So that's cool. Uh, we have a definite integral that we can evaluate now. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, 2 pi r squared, that's just a constant in terms of theta. So I can bring that out the front. So that becomes 2 pi r squared times the integral from negative pi on 2 to pi on 2 of cosine theta d theta. And I notice that cosine is an even function. You can use that even function identity when you have symmetrical bounds, but I'm not going to do that in this video. Um, so now we can integrate cosine theta. That's just, that's really easy. That's just sine of theta. So have sine of theta from negative pi on 2 to pi on 2. And we just simply plug in the, um, the bounds inside of this function here. So in the end, we have 2 pi r squared. Sine of pi on 2, that's just 1. And sine of negative pi on 2, that's negative 1. So we're subtracting the lower bound. So in the end, 2 pi r squared, multiply that by 2. And we get 4 pi r squared as expected. So, uh, yep, that's uh, how you derive the formula for the surface area of a sphere. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.